Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a larger piece of wall art from a 16 by 20 canvas frame that you can easily purchase at Michael's. If you're looking to fill up some wall space and you don't wanna go out and splurge on a huge piece of canvas, this is a kind of like a hack, if you will, to be able to do it on a budget but still get the same effect as if going the more expensive route. So let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. For this project, you're gonna need four 16 by 20 canvas spreads like this. You can get this at Michael's, typically in a three or five pack, usually on discount, which is really good. Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take your four canvases, lay them down flat like this. So it's gonna create one large piece to paint on. So to go ahead and attach all four of your canvases together, what I did was with a 3 16 inch drill bit, I just drilled in two holes, one on this side, one at the top. Um, basically, I didn't really measure it, but you do wanna just make sure that whatever holes you drill on this side, you want the holes on the other canvas to match up exactly. So that's really the only thing you wanna be careful of. Um, so you're gonna drill anywhere that you're going to be attaching your canvases, you're going to be drilling holes. So I did two holes on this side, two holes on this side to attach these two together. So to attach these two bottom pieces together, you're gonna to go ahead and drill two holes and then two holes at the top here. Same thing with these two. Two holes here and two holes here. And then again, repeat two holes here, two holes here. I was trying to attach them with zip ties. It's way too flimsy with zip ties. So I went to the hardware store with my dad and we picked up three packs um, because we're going to need, I'm going to be using screws for this. So you're going to need a total of eight screws for this. So I am using a three inch. This is a number eight dash 32. There's three in here. Um, it also comes with the nuts and then you also need some washers. So I just got a pack of 30 here, number six, because you need it to be large enough to be able to accommodate your screw, but um, small enough so that it's not Fit, you know, fidgeting around in there. You want it to be kind of more of a tighter fit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and attach this into the framework and then I will be right back. Once you have your screws, your washers, and your nuts in place, this is what it's gonna look like. So as you can see, you put the screws into the holes that you drilled, you put the washer and then the nut to secure it and you just wanna make sure it's tightly secured. And the piece, as you're going to be able to see, it's a lot sturdier than when I was using the zip ties because before it was just kind of flopping all over the place, but with the screws in place, it makes it very nice and sturdy. Now, when I do flip it around, you can see the seams there. I don't like that. So what I ended up deciding was to re-canvas the entire piece, not necessarily removing the canvas that's already on there, but actually just placing a sheet of canvas that you can get from Hobby Lobby or Joann's and adhering that onto the surface of the canvas. I did go ahead and take some untreated canvas that I got from Hobby Lobby and basically just cut it to fit the entire piece. Okay, so Indy is going to step all over my project. <laughs> Um, so basically I just took the untreated canvas and I just cut it to fit the size of the entire frame and I did have some trouble with it adhering. So what I did first was I went ahead and I put some Mod Podge, just a very, very light, um, very, very light coat of Mod Podge all over the entire piece. And then I placed the canvas fabric right on top of it to keep it very taut and in place so it didn't buckle in any of the other areas. And then off of Amazon, I purchased a staple gun and I basically, staple or nail gun, and basically I just had the fabric on the front side with the Mod Podge, I made sure it was all smoothed out. And then with the remaining piece here, I just pulled it really taut, took the nail gun and put it in different areas, of course, all throughout the frame. And then in the corners, you just kind of wrap it as if you're doing a present, if you will, like the corners of a present. So that was really easy to do. And that's pretty much it. So that's kind of what all the corners end up looking like. And so I basically let this dry for 
a few days just to make sure everything was nice and adhered down. And then from Michaels, I purchased this folk art gesso and in the color white. So I just took the gesso and put it all over the entire canvas. And now the canvas is basically prepped and ready to go to accept acrylic paints. One thing I wanted to point out is a line that you see across the canvas, which I'm not a fan of, is because I ran out of canvas fabric, so I sewed two pieces together. But if you just use one big sheet, you're gonna be fine, you won't have that seam. So the next thing I did was I printed out a few copies of the Carousel of Progress wall just so I could see the different lines, the shapes, and obviously the different colors. Now, I love more bold colors, so I'm probably going to do more of the coloring from this because as you can see here, the wall, it's, it's pretty colorful and bright, so I want to keep the brightness with the colors. Essentially, what I did was I just took the image, I drew it, and I used the tapes scotch painters tape that you can get off of Amazon. And then off of Amazon, I purchased this um, Tessart crepe paper, fine line tape, and it came with a bunch of different widths. So after you mark everything down with your tape, I just did like a quick legend um, of abbreviations for the different colors and the different sections they're gonna be in. G is green, LB is light blue, DY is dark yellow, DO is dark orange, M is for magenta, D, db is dark blue and ly is light yellow you go in and just kind of give yourself a guide just to make sure that you don't paint a section a, a color that's not supposed to be that color so it's just easier in terms of mapping for your painting so for instance at the bottom i have g for green so now we're just going to get into the actual painting of it This is about two coats later and this is what it looks like until I remove the tape and then work on the other sections. So you definitely want to make sure the sections are dry in between. And as you can see, Indy left his little mark right there, which I'm going to end up saving because it was too cute. To make the rounded corners when you are coming on those particular shapes, I found it to be really easy to just kind of take your blue tape and tear it into smaller pieces so that you can manipulate the tape into that shape. So that's what I did for those rounded corners. Now, was it perfect? No. Did I have to go back in and kind of just touch up a little bit? Yes, but that's not a big deal because at least you have uh, the pr preliminary shape in place to work with. Now for the yellow section of the painting, I did find that the dark yellow was not as mustard color as I really wanted as was showing in the picture. So I decided to do a saffron yellow uh, with the Americana paint and that actually worked out a lot better in terms of tone that I was looking for. This is the painting so far. Um, I do have a couple areas I need to clean up because when I was using the Scotch blue tape, unfortunately, if you can see a little bit of the paint had bled through, um, even though the tape was secure on the canvas. So I went to Lowe's to pick up this frog tape, which I've heard really good things about. And even the cashier was like, you're gonna love frog tape. It's way better than any tape out there. So I'm going to try this to clean up this area. I'll report back and let you know 
I've never tried this before, so if you have tried it with any success, um, I'm hoping that I will be a fan of it because I'm not a fan of the blue tape. I've had to kind of go over the lines multiple times. So that's just been the one tedious part about this whole project are the very thin lines because if you don't have good tape, it will bleed through. So I am just gonna do a little bit of cleanup, but for the most part, everything is done. So I'm just gonna clean up and then apply some varnish on top and then we will be set. I can't wait to complete it and have it hanging up on my wall. So I will show you what that looks like at the very end. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use this Deco Art Dura Clear Satin Varnish and I apply one to three coats. I let them dry in between just to make sure everything's completely sealed. So as you can see from the video, the large piece of wall art that I wanted to create was the Carousel of Progress. I loved, ever since I saw that attraction at Walt Disney World, I fell in love with the bright colors. And just because this particular side of my craft room is all dedicated to Walt Disney and kind of vintage Disney. So I wanted to have a piece of the Carousel of Progress in there as well as he was um, part of that whole creation of that attraction. So. I love the colors. It's definitely me. I love the brightness, the orange, that pop of orange is my favorite color of all time, as you probably know already. This was just a really fun project to do. And again, you can create anything you want um, using this kind of concept. So you can do it on a smaller scale. You can do it on an even bigger scale. So it just kind of really depends on what you want to create for your own space. If you do recreate it, please let me know in the comments. If you have any questions about it, please also let me know in the comments as well. But um, in the meantime, I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps me out. And it makes me so excited every single time I see another one of you subscribe to my channel. So really, really appreciate that. And until next time, I will see you in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.